Welcome to Chemistry Lab. My name is Jeremy Krug, and today we're going to be carrying out an acid-base titration using acetic acid, vinegar, and sodium hydroxide. Well, to start with, you want to take a burette, and this is a burette here, has a tube here and a stopcock, which allows you to, to dispense a very precise amount of sodium hydroxide. And we're going to, first of all, rinse this out. So the first thing you want to do is rinse out your burette with a small amount of the solution it's going to be containing. So we're going to be putting sodium hydroxide in here. This is a fairly dilute solution. I always recommend that you, you know, check to make sure that the stopcock is closed before you pour in there. And if you'd like to use a funnel to dispense your sodium hydroxide, that's okay. Just make sure that the funnel is clean and dry whenever you do that. You only want to put a few milliliters of the sodium hydroxide in there. And you want to basically coat the inside of that burette with the sodium hydroxide. So you want to be very careful not to make a mess or to spill this. And we're going to rinse this out into the waste container here. It's usually not a good idea to pour much sodium hydroxide directly down the drain. So I want to rinse that out. And so basically I've just coated the inside of the burette with the solution it's going to contain, which is the, the dilute sodium hydroxide. And if you think you got a little bit on the outside, we can always wipe that off with the, with the little Kim wipes here. So next, we're going to fill this burette. Since it's been coated with the solution it's going to contain, we're going to fill this all the way up to the top, or at least pretty close to the top. And we'll be very careful as you pour this. All right, so there we have the sodium hydroxide in the burette. It's been filled pretty close to the zero line. I, I don't fill it all the way to the zero. Zero is up here at the top. I, it's somewhere in between one and two milliliters, and that's okay. Um, you don't want to get sodium hydroxide on your skin. It is fairly caustic, and it'll burn you. Uh, even in a dilute amount. So if you do get a little bit on your skin, you're going to want to rinse that off with the, uh, the sink here. You want to rinse your hands if you got any of that on your skin at all. And of course, dry off your hands with a paper towel. We'll dispose of, of this here in our, our trash can. So here I have a burette filled pretty close to zero. Now, the thing is, this burette was empty before I did this titration, and so I don't have anything down here. I, I want to make sure that there are no bubbles in the bottom of this burette. So I want to allow some of that, there we go, I want to get all of the bubbles out of there. So you can tell if there's a bubble uh, when you open the stopcock and let some of the sodium hydroxide flow out you should see no air, air bubbles in here at all. So this is, this is the way it ought to be. So this is a burette that's ready to be used. So I'm going to attach this to the uh, burette stand. And now the next thing we need to do is to dispense exactly 10 milliliters of acetic acid into this Erlenmeyer flask. This uh, shape of the flask is called an Erlenmeyer flask. So I have some acetic acid here that's been dispensed, and, a, and a, uh, a pipette, and a pipette bulb. Now, this takes a little bit of practice to uh, use a pipette and a pipette bulb to dispense a very precise amount of acid. But once you get some practice, you'll find it's not too difficult. You want to poke the, the end of this pipette down into the, into the beaker, and we're going to squeeze, and then release, and we're going to notice some of that acid will be rising up the length of that pipette. And there's a line up here, and I want to 
Notice how I, I did that. I released the pipette bulb, and, and, and then immediately I stuck my finger, my index finger, on the top of that. And so you probably can't see it on the video, but there is a little line right here that shows where the uh, a pipette is going to dispense 10 milliliters of acid. I want to release the pressure on my finger ever so gently and allow the level of that acid, the bottom of that meniscus, to just barely, there we go, just barely touch that line. Okay? Now, when the bottom of that meniscus is touching the line, that means that this pipette is ready to dispense 10 milliliters of acid. Now, I may have some droplets on the outside, so I want to just, you know, clean the outside of that with a little chem wipe here. And now, it looks like the pipette is ready to dispense. So I'm going to set my Erlenmeyer flask over here. I'll be careful there. And I'm just going to let my finger off of there. And the pipette, as we can see, is dispensing the 10 milliliters of acid. This takes a few seconds for it to happen. But that's how it, it works. And just to make sure, I want to take that little, there's a little half drop that's hanging off of the end of the pipette there. I'm going to touch that to the inside wall of the flask and get any residual acetic acid into the flask. Now, if I look at the pipette, I may notice that there is a very small amount of acid that's still in there. And that's okay. I don't want to blow that out using the bulb or, or somehow get that into the flask. This particular pipette is labeled as TD at the very top. TD stands for to deliver. That means that this pipette has been built specifically so it will deliver 10 milliliters of acid. So I don't want to to uh, like blow that out because then I actually have more than 10 milliliters. If you have a pipette that says TC, that means to contain, and then you would have to, uh, to kind of uh, use the bulb and, and blow that out. But you don't have to now. TD, it has delivered 10 milliliters of acid. Now, in a typical acid-based titration, it's okay to take some distilled water. So I have a water bottle here. And just add a little bit of water here to get those little half drops that were on the side of the flask down into the bottom. And so now I have, hopefully, all of my acetic acid down there in the, in the bottom of the, of the flask. And I can use this, uh, this water splash bottle here to, to get that in case I'm not sure I have it all down there. All right, so the next thing I want to do is add some acid base indicator. Now, since we have a uh, weak acid in here and sodium hydroxide is a strong base, that means that we're expecting a pH at the equivalence point to be somewhere slightly, slightly on the basic side, somewhere around 9. And phenolphthalein is a very effective indicator for these types of titration because it actually changes color right around pH 9. It changes from colorless in its acidic form to a pink and almost a purple color once it gets to pHs above 9. So this is very appropriate. I'm going to add three drops of phenolphthalein. One, two, three. And hopefully, whenever the reaction is complete, we should have a color change. So once again, I'm ready for the titration. And so I want to put the Erlenmeyer flask in here and make sure that the point of that burette is down there. And now we're actually ready to titrate. So at this point of the titration, there's some more lab technique that we want to uh, keep in mind here. We want to start by reading, making an initial reading of uh, the sodium hydroxide in here. So 
you want to read this, and when you read a, a burette, you always want to read it to the hundredths of a milliliter. So that means you're going to have to uh, estimate in between the two lines. That's a little hard to do because the lines are really close together. So I have a little burette reading card, which is basically just an index card that has a little a line drawn on it. And I can hold this behind so that the bottom of that meniscus is very clear. This takes a little bit of practice. We are right around 5.2 3. Okay, so I'm going to record that initial volume. We're at 5.23 milliliters. Now, I'm ready to start titrating. I'm going to open the stopcock here and allow some of the base, the sodium hydroxide, to dispense out. And you'll notice that as I do that, it looks like it's turning pink. That doesn't mean the reaction is over, because as I swirl the amount there, the, uh, the flask, it looks like it disappears. It goes back to colorless. And so what I want to do is keep titrating until it turns pink and stays pink. And so this is probably going to take a little while. But that's okay. You can keep doing this. And as you do more of these, you'll start to get a technique As you titrate more, you'll notice that the pink will stay around for a longer period of time. Okay? That means that you're getting very close. Now at some point, you're going to titrate, and you'll get to this point right here, where it turns pink, and it looks like it is staying pink, or very, very close to that. You may need about maybe one more drop. And there we go, there's that last drop, and sure enough, that is, that is pink. And so I'm going to take that last little half drop, and to get the half drop, I just take the, um, the water bottle and just hit the side of the, of the burette there, and yeah, that is definitely the end point. That is definitely pink. In fact, it may be even a little bit past that. But that's a pretty good titration. That's not uh, too bad of a, a color there. There are some students who are able to do an acid-base titration, and you get a pink that's very a pale color. That's even better than what you might have here. So once again, you want to take a final reading. So our initial reading was 5.23. So this is where we can take another reading. And this time, it looks like we are right around 15.5. Zero. So that means that we used 9.97 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. Well, at this point, we can plug in our data into the titration equation, which is M sub A times V sub A equals M sub B V sub B. So if we plug that in, we uh, knew ahead of time that this sodium hydroxide has a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per liter. So when we plug this in, we have M sub A, which is the molarity of the acid, and that's what we're trying to solve for in this case here. We don't know what that is, times the volume of the acid, which is 10 milliliters. That was the amount that we dispensed from the pipette, equals M sub B, the molarity of the base, which we knew ahead of time to be 0 0.100 moles per liter, times V sub B the volume of the base, which we just found to be 9.97 milliliters. And so when we do the algebra there, 
we find that the molarity of the acid is 0 0.0997 moles per liter. So this is basically how we do an acid-base titration. And when you finish, you can clean up. You can lift this here. And we can take our uh, finished product, which has a pH of somewhere around 9, and we can put that into our waste container. And now we can wash out our glassware and perhaps do a couple more titrations. Uh, well, I hope you learned how to do an acid-based titration here in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you learned something, then please give me a thumbs up. And I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.